Hi, and welcome to Gavinlon Digital. I'm Gavin Lon. .NET 6 completes the unification of the platform and adds new capabilities for building web, native and hybrid apps for Linux, Windows, Mac, iOS and Android with a single code base. This video is an overview of what to expect with the release of .NET 6, which is due to be released on the 9th of November of this year, 2021. For content like this and much more, please consider subscribing and please ring the bell so that you'll be notified of future content. Please feel free to share this video with anyone you feel may gain value from its content. Before I give a brief summary of what new features and improvements to expect with the release of .NET 6, I'd like to present you with a brief summary of my personal experiences as a developer with the technological innovations that have been made over the years I remember working as a young developer in the late 90s on enterprise web applications. When I look back, I'm proud of what we were able to achieve using what is now known as Classic ASP or Classic Active Server Pages. Classic ASP was introduced as Microsoft's first server-side scripting technology for creating web applications. The ASP files were coded in VBScript. I remember we wrote our business logic in Visual Basic and compiled our code into COM components. We then installed our COM components in an environment known as MTS, Microsoft Transaction Server. The Microsoft Component Object Model, COM, and Microsoft Transaction Server, MTS, later evolved into COM+. Using Active Server Pages, our code was written in VBScript, and we would call our COM components from our Active Server Pages. COM Plus handles many of the resource management tasks that previously needed to be programmed by the developer, such as thread allocation and security. Classic Active Server Pages allowed a developer to implement code logic using VBScript and output HTML, client-side JavaScript and CSS code to the client's browser. So back then, we typically created our applications using a three-tier architecture. Classic ASP contained code and logic to output HTML code, JavaScript, and CSS to the client's browser. COM components that contained business rules ran in MTS, later known as COM+. SQL Server was used for our backend storage facility. In the early 2000s, I moved to London. My move to London coincided with the first release of C-Sharp and .NET. .NET was a gigantic step forward for Microsoft technologies. Visual Basic 6 was the last version of Visual Basic before the dramatic change that was to follow in the form of .NET. .NET was a complete rethink. Visual Basic was still offered as a language, but instead of being limited to being a largely event-based language tightly coupled with the Visual Basic 6 IDE, was now known as Visual Basic.NET and is a fully object-oriented programming language. The first version of .NET was named .NET Framework. Programs written in .NET Framework executed in a software environment, in contrast to a hardware environment. This software environment is named the Common Language Runtime, CLR. A number of class libraries, called the Framework class libraries, are built into .NET Framework and are available to be consumed by .NET applications. Developers can produce their software by combining their source code with .NET Framework class libraries. So .NET Framework provides a library of classes that can be leveraged from our applications. .NET applications run in an environment known as the Common Language Runtime, or CLR, which can be described as the .NET virtual machine and provides services like just-in-time compilation, memory management, security, and exception handling. So .NET Framework provided developers with a sophisticated environment that would revolutionize the developer's experience. In the early 2000s, I was now working on web applications using a .NET version of Active Server Pages, known as ASP.NET. And I was able to write my code using a new fully object-oriented programming language known as C-Sharp. So in the early 2000s, the introduction of .NET was a massive leap forward 
.NET Framework was interoperable, meaning you could write code in any language that supported the common type system. So we could write our applications using, for example, C Sharp, Visual Basic, C++, etc. This was great, but .NET Framework could only run on Windows platforms and required a monolithic installation. .NET Framework does not run on Linux or Mac OS. Mono was released on June 30, 2004. Mono is a free open source implementation of Microsoft's .NET Framework based on the ECMA standards for C Sharp and the common language runtime. Mono was a version of .NET that could run on multiple platforms. Mono can run on Windows, Mac OS, and Linux. On June the 27th, 2016, the first version of .NET Core was released. .NET Core is the .NET successor to .NET Framework. .NET Core is primarily developed by Microsoft employees by way of the .NET Foundation and released under the MIT license. .NET Core supports the use of NuGet packages. .NET Core can be described as a lightweight, modular, cross-platform and more agile version of .NET Framework. To prevent future fragmentation of .NET implementations, .NET Standard was introduced. The motivation behind .NET Standard was to establish greater uniformity in the .NET ecosystem. .NET Standard is a formal specification of .NET APIs that are available on multiple .NET implementations. The specification is maintained by .NET implementers, specifically Microsoft includes .NET Framework, .NET Core and Mono, and Unity. .NET 5 was a significant release of .NET and was released on the 10th of November 2020. .NET 5 is the first release of a version of .NET that attempts to unify all features of all versions of .NET under one implementation of .NET. The idea behind this version of .NET is to have one .NET moving forward that can target Windows, Linux, Mac OS, iOS, Android, tvOS, watchOS, and WebAssembly, and more. .NET 5 is the future of .NET Core and is almost a complete reimagine of the old .NET framework. In fact, .NET 5 is the first major update since the 2016 release of .NET Core. .NET 5 was a direct evolution from .NET Core 3.1. And the reason why it was called .NET 5 and not .NET 4 is because the last release of .NET Framework was version 4.8, which was released on July the 25th, 2019. Both .NET Core and Framework were maintained in parallel allowing you to choose between one or the other. You could leverage .NET Standard to make shared libraries between the two. The release of .NET 5 meant that .NET Framework will be deprecated. This means you can only use .NET Framework as long as your operating systems, for example, Windows Server 2019, will support it. So .NET 5 was the first step forward to unify .NET. And finally, we get to the release of .NET 6. The main significant aspect of .NET 6 is the fact that it delivers the final parts of the .NET unification plan that started with .NET 5. Here is a brief overview of the new features and improvements that we can expect with the release of .NET 6. C Sharp version 10. The significance of version 10 of C Sharp and future versions of C Sharp that are to be released in line with each new version of .NET is that the developer can write less code. With the evolution of C-sharp, there's a strong focus on simplification. Much of the boilerplate code that needed to be written when using previous versions of C-sharp do not need to be written when using C-sharp version 10. So this improves the clarity and simplification of a developer's code and potentially increases productivity, allowing the developer to focus more on application business logic. .NET Multi-Platform App UI for Native Mobile and Desktop Apps .NET Multi-Platform App UI, or .NET MAUI, is an evolution of Xamarin. It allows the developer to create applications for multiple different types of platforms using a single code base. You can write one project that can be compiled into an application that runs on Android devices, iOS devices, Windows desktops, Windows devices, as well as Mac OS. So, one code base written in, for example, c -sharp, that can leverage native capabilities on multiple heterogeneous devices. 
Blazor desktop web apps with native device capabilities. So one advantage of this is that if you are a web developer and don't want to learn XAML to implement your front-end code, as you would when developing an application using, for example, WPF, UWP, or Xamarin Forms, you can use HTML5, CSS, Bootstrap, and JavaScript, i.e. the web technologies with which you are already familiar, to create desktop applications. Through Blazor Desktop Web Apps, you will still be able to leverage native device functionality and not worry about learning new technologies to leverage these native functionalities. Minimal Web APIs for Cloud Native Apps This is a great feature that allows a developer to be up and coding, for example, a simple microservice a lot quicker than if the developer were to code that microservice using a typical Web API that implements the MVC architecture. There is far less ceremony involved in getting started. More device targets, including Apple M1. .NET 6 will support single file deployments for Windows with up to 50% smaller file size. .NET 6 supports ahead of time compilation. Productivity enhancements like Hot Reload. If, for example, you've developed Angular applications with Node, you may be familiar with the Hot Reload feature. This feature is now coming to .NET developers. This means improved productivity simply because there is less need to stop and start the running of our code during the development of our applications. Continued performance improvements in runtime and build time. EF Core performance is now 70% better on the tech and power benchmark. So that was a brief overview of what you can expect with the release of .NET 6. The official release date of .NET 6 is November the 9th, 2021. The official release will be announced at .NET Conf 2021. .NET Conf is a free three-day virtual developer event that celebrates the major releases of the .NET development platform. It is co-organized by the .NET community and Microsoft and sponsored by the .NET Foundation and ecosystem partners. So why not go celebrate at .NET Conf 2021 and learn about what you can do with .NET 6. So .NET 6 is more great news for .NET developers. For more detailed information about .NET 6, I've included links to blog posts written by Richard Lander, the program manager of the .NET team. I've also included a link for those of you who wish to download the latest preview version of .NET 6. For content like this and much more, please consider subscribing and please ring the bell so that you'll be notified of future content. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and please share this video with anyone you feel may benefit from its content. If you'd like to thank me by buying me a coffee, I've included a link to my Buy Me A Coffee webpage below in the description. It will be greatly appreciated. I really enjoy reading your comments, so please feel free to engage with me in the comments section. Thank you and take care.